I'm Father Gray, and this is a St. Mary's Minute. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday in Lent. This is one of those Sundays that has a special name. This is Laetare Sunday, Rejoice Sunday. Now, when someone tells us to rejoice, to be happy, it's very difficult to just make that happen out of nowhere. We can't just produce happiness. Instead, we actually have to do something else. It helps to understand a little bit more about it. We have to convince ourselves, be convinced, and then not even then does it always work. Now, this weekend, we are rejoicing because Easter is just a couple weeks away. We're happy because of the resurrection of our Lord, but not just because it's on the calendar. In our faith, we have so much, and this thing that we are so happy about is the Lord's resur resurrection. It is light in Christ. It is our life in Christ. Our happiness comes from our relationship with Christ. And the most important part of that life together is about to be celebrated. Let's listen to the gospel for this Sunday. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, it is. But others said, no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. They answered and said to him, you were born totally in sin and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. That which is our faith is very much like this man's sight. Our Lord Jesus Christ gives it to us. He asks us to be washed in that which is our saving baptism. And then we are able to see. What are we able to see? That same God who is the brightness in Exodus that leads the people out of slavery. That same brightness who is Christ in his nativity at his manifestation, his epiphany, the same Christ who is the brightness of the morning of the resurrection. Christ is our light. Now our blindness may be a variety of things. We have physical blindness and we have therapies for that, but the blindness that we have in our hearts is something that is caused by what we choose to shed light on through our faith. Our faith wants to shine to every part of our life, and our faith is so bright it shines even through death. What we open ourselves up to in this light is that which Christ is able to touch and to save. There are lots of ways in which light and dark play in our lives. In our houses and the places where we are, we have light switches. We can turn the lights on, we can turn them off. We can be in the light, we can be in the dark, 
Maybe we even have dimmers on those lights that make it still a little bit light while maintaining the darkness. Likewise, outside, we have the sun and we have the night. We have the daytime and maybe during the daytime the clouds come and this makes it dark, even very dark. In our own lives, there are things which are in the light and things which are in the dark, things that we like having bright, things that we like being able to disregard a little bit in the darkness. Maybe one of the things that we want to avoid a lot in these days is talk about coronavirus. We want to keep that in the dim light because otherwise it's pretty overwhelming. At the same time, there are other things in our lives that we keep dim intentionally. When we see the poor, we prefer to shed a dim light on that so we don't have to think about it. We don't have to grapple with the idea of how to help people that we don't know how to help. There are other things in our lives that we don't know how to do. How do we actually improve ourselves? How do we come closer to being with Christ? How do we pray? The answer to these requires us to look at them in the light. We pray by opening ourselves up to Christ, who is the light. 